What are your main priorities now for this new company? Thank you, Bonnie, for having us in this very exciting day that we got listed in New York Stock Exchange after completing the deal. Listen, our priorities are to continue to drive this amazing equity Avon, now part of the Natura & Co family, to new heights. We believe in this direct selling notion that is transforming itself to a social selling platform. Uh, if you want to call it, you know, we believe that uh, what we used to call just the Avon ladies uh, 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 ding dong is becoming more the click click, high touch, high tech. And we believe with the Natura ownership now, we're going to be able to accelerate that to over 6 million consultants and representatives globally. Beyond you know, just deciding that multi-level marketing has moved really to social networks, how else do you continue to make multi-level marketing work? Because it's essentially the same kind of business plan, it's just on a different platform. Yeah, but we, we do believe, and again, we've been doing that with Natura for 50 years, the notion that the representatives, the consultant, become really beauty advisors. And it's all the, the earnings that they, they do, it comes from the relationship with the company. It's just that the network that used to be just offline is now transforming itself to online. And the power that we now have is the direct-to-consumer group to reach over 200 million people every day, everywhere, to our four brands, we believe is very powerful. Now you also own Aesop and Body Shop and they've also been doing it extraordinarily well for a long time. What lessons will you take from those two brands and move to Avon? Yeah, good question. What um, you know, the Body Shop and, and, and Aesop brings to the group is this notion of multi-channel. You know, we have over 3,000 store, physical stores with the Body Shop and Aesop. And we believe that consumers can and should actually find products, both in the Tura and the Body Shop, in this notion of multi-channel. So yes, social selling is super important and it's transforming the relationship selling, but we also believe in the complementarity of potentially stores, physical presence, uh, uh, besides you know, the online presence. What kind of margins are you looking for? You've already in Sao Paulo been trialing a one-hour delivery service and you've already been working with influencers, let's say, uh, influencers slash multi-level market marketers. What is it doing for your bottom line, for your revenues, for how much you pay these, these people, these ambassadors and representatives, and how much trickles down to the bottom line for Avon? Yeah, so uh, again, you know, we, we are talking about, again, a, a commercial model that we want to enhance the services and the offerings to the representatives and the consultants. If you think about it, you know, Natura is only present in six markets in Latin America. The opportunity now for the representatives of Avon to potentially have the Natura brand in markets like Russia, South Africa, the Philippines are really powerful. And those things will help the representatives to increase their earnings while at the same time improve some of the service levels. I'm just curious because it feels like you know bigger companies have been getting out of these kinds of businesses. So, for example, the North American part of Avon was sold to Cerberus, which you know it bought obviously in 2015, but then exited just a few years later. It didn't want to hold on to it, and it exited at a loss, in fact, which is very unusual for private equity. And it sold to a South Korean firm, and then Coty sold its majority stake in Unique. So I'm curious as to why you think this is still a business model that survives. Yeah, we are, we are very passionate about the notion of relationship selling. It's just that in our mind, this is becoming like a renaissance. It's transforming itself from what it used to be just, again, the door-to-door, the, -door, the offline, to now really leveraging, call it 6.4 million micro-influencers using social tools like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, WhatsApp, to be able to connect and establish the relationship with consumers. In fact, we think that this is the present and the future. So we are seeing a renaissance of direct selling. And even in the US, you see examples of other companies like Stellan Dot, Rodan and Field, that build very strong business based on this notion of social selling. So for us, it's about the relationship selling. 
which in the past was only offline and now is becoming off and online. 